I think a lot of the a lot of Marines are frustrated, and that's what the the U.S. government keeps Marines frustrated, and that's that's why they're the best trained, you know, uh, killers. This hallway. I like couldn't believe I was alive. Like I, I was like, I'm alive. I'm alive. Today, actor Ray Valentin is here. He stars in the new HBO miniseries Generation Kill and the upcoming Harrison Ford movie Crossing Over. And later in the show, actress Julia Jones from the new movie Hellride. Great to have you here today, Ray. Good to be here. So you just got back from about eight months in Africa? <sighs> yes, yes, an amazing experience. Uh, we left last June uh -huh. um, for the motherland. The motherland. The Are motherland. you from Africa? I am not, but I mean, it is the motherland. I mean, okay. that's, how, that's how I grew up knowing the motherland. They say the whole human race. They I guess. did. It's the beginning. The fact that I touched the sands of the uh, the uh, one of the oldest countries in, in Africa and uh, Namibia. We started in. Uh huh. Uh, we got there first, and we spent about three, actually like eight weeks there. Eight weeks in Namibia. And did you see uh, J uh, Brad Pitt and uh, you know everyone? Angelina looking for all the, the baby? locals had stories. They were like, hey, hey. The, supposedly there was rumor that Vin Diesel was working with us oh we had started that rumor and so like all the locals were like where's Vin Diesel Vin Diesel Vin Diesel we're like oh he's right there and we point to like random guys that were all buffed and stuff <laughs> and get them to chase you they, know. they, 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 they bought it they actually they did they, they bought you know they're like hey you know Vin Diesel is an actor he could look he can look different you know he can, he can <laughs> stretch his role um, so that was fun and then uh, we stayed at some amazing places in, in Namibia they say it's beautiful. There it is. It's it's all it's it's is as if California, uh, instead of the mountains, it's all sand. Mm. So it's ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and then all the sand dunes. Sand. Some of the oldest sand dunes in the world, um, and one of the tallest ones, which uh, is called Dune Seven, which is pretty cool to like go down and either surf down or run down or. You and know, that, that what you spent your free time doing surfing. And yeah, down surfing. Down you know, we weren't allowed to do at the beginning. We weren't allowed to do a lot of things like horseback riding or like skating or anything because it was like we'd get hurt. You know. Uh -huh. But um, one of the actors kind of broke the ice and went skydiving, so that kind of you know opened the door for all the actors to do all kind of amazing stuff like scuba diving and you know gliding off the sand dunes and mopeds and gun ranges and things like that. Which having on goofing off. Having yeah, you know, time, trying huh? to have a good time. I mean, it, was, it wasn't that much to do out in Namibia other than work and train. So. so what were you doing on the set? This is a movie about the Iraq War. Yes, this is about the first uh, recon uh, battalion that actually was the, f the first Marines to actually cross enemy lines in 2003 when we invaded Iraq. Uh -huh. uh, there was a journalist by the name of Evan Wright who was embedded into the battalion. Mm -hmm. uh, he went on to uh, basically follow these Marines for six weeks, the first five to six weeks of the war oh. and then he got back and wrote a book about it became a national bestseller it's called generation kill you should check it out especially if you're going to be a fan of the generation kill show it's uh i think it's very close to the book um of course there's a lot of controversy about that because uh some of the people that are represented in the book are mm -hmm. Real life people, and they think, "Hey, that's not how I went down, or no. that's not how I, I was in Iraq." Or so the way they were characterized, or the actual facts of the yeah, event, just the or? facts, the way that Evan Wright, I think, uh, you know, copied all the facts, and and from his point of view, obviously, hmm. um, the way it's told in the story, it's very close to the book. So, what, what, what's your character? Uh, I play uh, Gabriel Garza. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's the head gunner, basically at the beginning. Um, he's manning a Mark 19 in the lead vehicle. And then he later gets uh, pushed to the second vehicle to man the 50 caliber, which is the rain of fire, or as they say, the dragon, you know, because it basically rains death on, on all enemies. It basically suppresses fire as the rest of the Marines basically set up positions and then, uh, you know, continue their, their mission. So it's pretty cool. And you told me beforehand you, had, you were working with actual Marines. Were there on the set with you? Yeah. Uh, Staff Sergeant Eric Cucker, who was uh, the most brilliant uh, Marine I've ever met. Oh. Uh, next to, obviously, close tie to uh, Sergeant Rudy Reyes. Hmm. Rudy actually played himself in the series. So um, oh. it's going to be interesting because uh, when you meet Rudy Reyes, you, you really go, wow, there's no one else who can play this guy other than you. You know, it was funny because even at the audition, um, they had had me, they were like, okay, you can read for Rudy Reyes and you can read for Gabriel Garza. So they're like, who do you want to do first? So I was like, all right, I'll do Garza first, you know, I'll do Garza. And I did Garza and they're like, we don't need to see anymore. We, you know, no. we, I was like, okay. And then when I met Rudy, I was like, oh, dude, I could never play you. 
You're like you're <laughs> like you're one of a kind guy. He's a, he's a great guy. He's he's basically a machine. I mean, the guy's like nonstop working out. He's fi all about fitness and health oh. and you know about the warrior spirit. Um, but the other one you said that was the coolest one, or Eric or Cucker. This guy was yeah. uh, he's like a big teddy bear. You would never oh. think he was a marine. You never think he's like. Now what do you now what do you mean? Is he are you saying he's pleasingly plump or something heavy or what? Or you said or he's plump. built. I did not say oh, that, okay. that, Eric. I did not say <laughs> that you were plump. Okay, he did. I, okay, I think he's. You're saying he's a little on the heavy side. No, he's 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 kind of massively built actually. Oh, just but just his his energy. He's, oh. you know, he's a lovable okay. guy. He's okay. got a big heart, but he, and he's been through a couple of tours in Iraq and, you know, has gotten, you know, he's been in a Humvee where it's been blown up and, you know, he's gotten his elbows kind of like, you oh, know, oh. surgically done again, his ears and stuff like that. But the guy is like a great, great, great guy. And he knew everything about, you know, first of all, he was there. So he had first experience of, of accounting all of the, uh, the mm. things that went down. But then also he was just thoroughly prepared you know and he basically made sure that everything was up to par with his marines and his you know and then as well as for the storyline now did he have problems with the facts or the guys you were working with since you said there was some he didn't about i mean the he was or? really uh, when it came down to those kinds of things he's like come on i was there you know what i mean this is what i saw this is what i did you know and these are the, these are the situations that these guys went through and uh when it came down to the facts he was he was he agreed a lot with what evan wright uh you know, wrote in the book and stuff. So I thought we're going to show something that's really, really authentic. You know? So was it intense being on the set that long if you're there for months at a time? It was, but we got lucky because the group of guys that we had, um, we had a really, really, really great group of guys. I mean, there was, I mean, we're friends. Most of us are still friends now. Mm. And uh, these guys were just great. I mean, we, we, there's, there were African guys from, the, you know, they brought people in from London. They brought people oh. in from America. So it was a very multicultural kind of group. Um, and, you know, all the time that we spent basically, you know, the downtime that you have on film, basically, we would utilize that time to basically uh, to exercise, you know, mm -hmm. do weapons training. You get in good, good shape as a result of it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, we did, um, we did, we Or did you lose weight? You know, I mean, that kind of thing. You're I did. Back I mean, better shape than you Supposedly in the book, you know, the guys lose weight because they basically didn't have time to exercise and they mm -hmm. were hungry and things like that. But, you know, we had to... In real life, you got in better shape. Change that a little bit. Yeah, you know, we worked out a lot and uh, ran a lot. And thanks to Rudy Reyes and Eric Cucker, these guys were always working out. They were nonstop. They would be working on the set, and then as soon as they'd wrap, these guys would be like, let's go to the gym. And, you know, Rudy taught us a bunch of different uh, marine workouts and things like that I've never done before, which was cool. We'll be right back. You know, it doesn't make you gay if you think Rudy's hot. We all think he's hot. Jesus, you're beautiful. Actually, I'm going to hell out here. Back home, all I eat is sushi and vegetables. The nutrition here is garbage. You know, I think Shereen and I are going to move to San Francisco. There's no fat people there. That was a no-shit scud attack, gents. Awesome. I just lived through a scud attack. And we are back with Ray Valentin today talking about his new HBO miniseries, Generation Kill. So does it matter your own thoughts on the war? Um, <sighs> most people have strong thoughts these yeah, days. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it, was, it, was, uh, it was interesting to actually meet Marines that actually were there and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then just have my own ideas about the war. It, this series definitely just confirmed all the feelings that I had confirmed about the war. Confirmed what you're... Can Which, you just, what, yeah, I mean, it was just like, like, why are we there? We're fighting, we there? we're fighting an enemy that is not at all, in any way, shape, or form, can even battle evenly. You know? Does your character feel this way? The character, <laughs> he does not, does actually. Not. His, the character, uh, I think a lot, of the, a lot of Marines are frustrated, and that's what the, the U.S. government keeps Marines frustrated and that's that's why they're the best trained you know uh, killers if you can say they're frustrated so what better way to get rid of the frustration by saying hey okay you know we're here you know we got clearance to kill let's do it you know what i mean so my character he he actually as as the series progresses he actually uh loves you know, he falls in love with, with killing. You know, it's mm. like he's got a massive gun. Is, is it hard to play that if you personally wonder why they're there? Or is it just a job? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, to these guys it is. It is a job. And, and playing it as an actor as well, I, I kept thinking that, that this is a job for them. This is what they do. You know, this, mm. is, a, this is their nine to five. You know, it's just, it just entails a lot of different things that a lot of uh, 
nine to fivers don't experience. So where else did you go? You were in Namibia and in Namibia. We were in South Africa for three months. We were in the coldest point, the Northern Cape, which is Uppington. Hmm. Do not. There's nothing to see in Uppington. Okay. Nothing. Maybe a, maybe a river and one wi wine farm, which was cool. But even the locals were like, why did you pick Uppington? So why did they pick Uppington? <laughs> well, I guess it was because of the uh, the, the tax break, maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything uh, story related? Was it supposed to be really remote or something? I mean, or and it was, I mean, it was the same. It looked like the same location in a lot of ways that we were shooting in Namibia. You know, it was hmm. just desert, you hmm. know. But we had to move... Uh, to South Africa for whatever reason. I'm going to cross it. You know, I was going to go there this summer, but I'm just going to cross it right You should. Up Uppington, so there, but okay. go down to Cape Town. I mean, okay. don't shoot down to Cape Town. You know, when it's, when it's December, you know, it's peak summer down there, and it's, and it's amazing, you know. And then you went on to... And then we went to Mozambique, which is a totally, like, night and day, mm. you know. What's, what's that like? Uh, there's corruption, you know, police. Uh, they're walking around with M16s trying to shake you down for shake you down yeah. literally even you, the actors on the oh, set yeah. are getting they, we, down. we stayed in literally the best hotel in Mozambique and in the capital in M Maputo mm -hmm. and uh, basically these cops knew like as soon as we enter the hotel they they knew when we would come out and we would walk to the restaurants and things like that and as soon as we walk out a lot of us got shaken down by officers wow. and, and you walls. have to give them something yeah well the thing is as as we entered into Mozambique, the government actually issued us a bunch of these forms that said, please help us stop corruption. Um, <laughs> by If you do Just get stopped by a police that. officer, yeah, if you get stopped by a police officer, have them fill out this form, and maybe that will get him to, you know, kind of... What does the form say? The form says, okay, who was the officer? Why did he stop you? What kind of fine did he give you? These kinds of information. Uh, and so... Do they, did you give them the form or did they fill it out? I, I have a big mouth when it comes to things like that. You know, it's like at first my friends were like, don't worry, don't worry, Ray. we got stopped once at like, you know, we had four people in the back seat of, a, of an SUV uh -huh. and the cop says, uh, too, too many, too many people are in there. And I'm like, <laughs> too many people, this is Africa. There's like a hundred people <laughs> hanging out from another Bucky on the side as they're moving and you yeah. stop us for what, $30, 30 US dollars. And the guys in the back like, don't say anything, Ray. And I'm like mm. holding my tongue. I'm like, this sucks. This sucks. This is this is why this com you know this country is in such bad shape. You know, it's it's mm. you know here are the leaders or the people that are supposed to be protecting the people, and this is what they're doing. You know, did, so. did you fill out the form or I the next time they didn't they okay. opted to pay the fine, which oh. I was totally against, and I made sure that everybody knew about that afterwards on the r ride back. I was like, this is not cool, man. We need to. <laughs> so the next time I got stopped, I was actually with a local. And um, I was like, hey, please, like, you know, while we were in the car, I was like, let me, let me try this. Let me see if it works. And she was like, you don't want it? I was like, just let me try it. And then I was like, hey, I tried my broken Portuguese. And I said, senore, you know, hey, I took out the form. And he's like, oh, hey, no te preocupe. And, you know, and he keeps going. And I was like, oh, it, wow, worked. it actually worked. It worked. I was like, yeah, I was like, it worked. So it was over a seatbelt thing. They were trying to get us, you know, wow. we were both wearing seatbelts. But he said, supposedly, we weren't wearing seatbelts. So... And, but this happened to everybody on the cast? I mean, it did. We, a lot of people got shaken down. Mm -hmm. One of the Marines almost, you know, actually lost it. Good thing he didn't have a weapon because, you know, he was actually... Uh, they were even shaking down the U.S. Marines. Yeah. Wow, you know what I mean? Wow. It, was, it was pretty intense. I mean, and a lot of the locals, they laugh at these things because it's, you know, this is... To the, them, the it's system. a joke. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's sad. But Mozambique, it's, uh, it's, a, it's one of those places you definitely have to visit. You know, it's got a little bit of everything. You know, poverty and, and beauty and corruption and magic <laughs> and I don't know. Corruption, all. okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I may cross that off my it's list like too. It's like Mexico. It's like Mexico for you. Like you Mexico. Know, when you go down to Mexico, do they shake you down, you know, when you're trying to get your tacos and stuff? I guess I don't, well, I, I don't go often. I guess that's, you don't eat that's tacos. why. You don't. I, I get them here in LA. Oh, well, hey, they're still good. <laughs> they're still good here. I mean, this will be out this summer in... Yes, HBO, <laughs> check it out. Um, you know, it's a miniseries, seven episodes. Um, there should be some previews out right now and stuff, so... And Harrison Ford crossing over. That's right, Harrison Ford. Um, it's an immigration film mm -hmm. about Los Angeles. Um, very, uh, it feels kind of like Crash. Mm -hmm. You can say it's the closest thing, I think, for people to understand or what the film is. Many stories. Um, it stars Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ashley Judd, Ray Liotta, and Sean Penn. Not and a bad cast. Not a bad cast. I mean, you know, I was like, hey, you know, and, and I was really excited because I—I I mean, my audition was uh, was literally one line. One line. Yeah, one line. The line was okay. Well, I'm gonna get into my character right now. No, wait. <laughs> that was my line. Okay. No, sure. That was my line. You're literally. hired. Hey, I was, and, and, and that's what Wayne Kramer said. He was like, you know, I, I showed up to the set. He goes. You know, Ray, I don't know why the casting director didn't use the other scenes because I get the script and I'm like, oh, I have lines. I have like scenes. I have like things in the movie that actually mean something. And he's like, yeah, I don't understand. He's like, but 
you Maybe must have did checking something your energy right. level. I don't know. You know it's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of. He showed me actually tapes of other people that did the line, and I was like. I was like, yeah, I would have, I would have picked me for that. You know? So, did you get to work with Harrison Ford much? Or? Harrison Ford is is the coolest guy, I think. Um, he he just sat down. He basically had his headphones and his iPod, and they were connected wirelessly. Oh, you know, he's he's hip with it. He knows what's going on, you know. And he sat down, and when he wasn't working, he was just kind of listening. To, I don't know what I was trying to. As he got up, I was trying to see what, you know, what was on his iPod, so I can. Uh, and was he doing Indiana Jones at the same time, or do you know how? He I don't was? know. I mean, I saw like a whip, like kind of in one of his bags. So I don't know <laughs> if he was, you know, kind of kept your distance. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if at one point he'd be like you, and then I'm like, you know, that that would be bad. So, but I did see something. It was kind of leather, and you know, in his in his bag that he had on his seat. It was kind of interesting. And that's out later this summer as well. It is. It should be out. Thank you very much, Thank Ray. Thank you for having me. We will be right back with Julia Jones. And we are back with actress Julia Jones. She's in the new Quentin Tarantino movie, Hellride. Great to have you here today. Yes, thank you. So, Quentin Tarantino, how cool is that? It's pretty cool. It's like rad. It's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what the adjective is. So, he produced this new movie coming yeah, out. Yeah, he um, produced it. It's about a biker gang? Yep, it's about um, a biker gang who is out for revenge on... Um, Another biker gang that mm. that killed me. Killed you? Yes. So you spend most of the movie dead. I am actually dead. I'm I've died you're already years dead. before the film starts. Right. Wow. wow. So um, does that make it hard to play when you're dead? It was such a different <laughs> experience, actually. Yeah. I, just I, you just laid there. The no. easiest thing was to die, but the rest of it. <laughs> the other Should we tell them you did this as flashbacks? I believe is that the way they they did it? Yeah, you that's were, what you they did. They did um, they did flashbacks sort of consistently throughout the film, and mm. you don't you sort of are slowly clued into what's going on, why these guys are, are mm. so angry. And so being Quentin Tarantino, this is all over the place, like through time and space. I mean, the order is, as you said, yeah, it's, it's, it's just kind of pretty trippy. It's pretty trippy. It looks really cool, and it's very, very fast, and it cuts all over the place, and time cuts. And it's, it's like math. You actually have to do math in your head. Reading <laughs> the script, you've got to, like, you know, go back and check your... Is the audience <laughs> worn out by the time they're done trying to... You're sitting there wondering what all happened. You, you just have to, together, like, uh, just enjoy it. Like, you can't try... Because there's actually... There's so much stuff in it, like, in the subtext, and mm. themes, and, and also dates and, and details. It's, it's such mm. a tight project. It's such a tight script that... I, it's like abstract art, sort of, where you just have and to. And you were an English major, so you really felt that that was all in there. There was that kind of. I was blown away uh, when I first read it. I was just like, "What does that mean?" I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, there's all of this very dramatic, extreme stuff. There's violence and there's nudity and there's all of that, but underneath hostile it, hostile kind of violence. No, no, <laughs> nothing. Actually, I didn't see or I don't. I did see Hostel, the first one, but I a long time Slice ago. And I <laughs> saw Hostel two. Oh, you, oh. You, uh huh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Remember I the did. one with the body up above and there. I was. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I. I was. I was. Yeah. It but was no, hard not, to watch. Not that bloody though. No. No. Not that bloody. Definitely okay. not that bloody. I mean, there's some like you know uh, detached limbs and and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, but nothing like that. It wasn't like gore for the sake of gore. It was mm. really. It was really more character driven thing than than making a point. They were just pissed off violence. people and they just had to get it out there. Yeah, there's all kinds of... And this is uh, Dennis Hopper and... Dennis Hopper, uh, Michael Madsen, David Carradine, mm -hmm. Eric Balfour, Larry Bishop, um, who's Joey Bishop's son and used to do all these motorcycle movies in the 70s, ah. directs it. And uh, Dennis Hopper, what was it like to work with him? He's so sweet. Mm -hmm. He's like this little... You know, easygoing, laid back. I don't know. Kind of comes over and just talks to you, very mellow. Oh. I know. Oh. I mean, it's. I told that to my mother, who has watched like every film he's ever done, and and, and knows his reputation really well. And now, was what was the set like in general? I mean, was Quentin Tarantino actually there and the director, or was it? Or you don't see him? I'm not sure. When I started working, Quentin was a can with Grindhouse. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the set was full of all of Quentin's. People mm. like the actors and um, and the producers and a, a lot of the people involved in the project had had worked with him before and they the, the m biggest significance of that was that they know each other really well, mm. so that you had that dynamic. Were they all as mellow as Dennis Hopper? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. No. <laughs> he was a nice Absolutely one. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. I just wondered, because you know sometimes, um, well, I was interviewing actually Betsy Russell the other day who's done some of the Saw movies, and I wonder when you work on a movie, now you said this wasn't ex as extremely violent as like no Hostile, way. but you know, but if there's a lot of violence on the set, I just wonder what it's like to work on the set, you, you know, how that affects the dynamic, if it's people just laugh and have a good time, or if they right, get Right, it's a really good question, or, actually. Um, you know. I had a very violent death in this um, mm. I get my throat slit and, and I was going to ask you, but I thought maybe it was giving away too much. But okay, so you're no, because it happens. It's okay. not like the end. Of, it's not like the end of the movie. Right it's at the beginning. Very right, clear yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that something's happened, but you don't, you know. Um, so I get my throat slit and lit on fire, wow. and you know, thrown up against walls and, and beaten up also. And that would do it. Yeah. And um, I think that the, I think, at least in in my scene, it was. Um, Everybody was very sensitive and very just sort of. They said, softer. "Okay, we're going to throw you up against the wall, but it's not going to hurt." Not even about the physicality of it, but just about like the like, um, the the death itself. Like, you're, there's uh, the idea of the concept of like someone's dying here, and that's a reality. Mm. Is that and, hard to play when you're getting? Well, I'm, first of all, I mean, I'm assuming there was a stunt double or something, or what special nope. effects makeup, mm -mm. or how do they? Yeah, well, there was definitely. Makeup. Oh, makeup. Okay. Oh, yeah. But it's happening to you. So you're yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and is it hard to play getting, a, you know, being brutally killed? It's pretty scary. It, mm. It's easy because it's reactionary, so you don't have to, like, really do any preparing <laughs> more. <laughs> you see the knife cut and you're done. Like, yeah, right. I mean, you just sort of sit there and let them, you know, hurt you, and you didn't yeah. just react to that. Does it give you something to think about? I mean, I hate to say that, but, you know, I mean, most of us don't sit around, well, yeah, oh thinking, gee, what if. Uh, for like a month after that, mm. uh, if there was a loud noise outside of my apartment, I was like, someone's banging on my <laughs> door, someone's coming, someone's, you know, I was I really freaked out about about mm. little things. So it's not like, so it's not just a job, you're not just saying, oh, I'm acting, you know, so it's, you're really there in the moment and, well, and really... Well, I, I, it's funny, I think there's like a changeover for me because, mm. um, you know, obviously I'm acting, I'm driving set, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing, it's fun. And, but then at a certain point, it becomes real, just mm. for like a little bit. To me, for me, it does, at least. You, I, and do they have to real. do that over and over again, or? Um, it wasn't so bad. Mm. I mean, certainly like a bunch of times. Mm. Uh, I think one of, one of the strangest moments for me, actually, was, was finishing that scene. It's a sequence of scenes. And uh, I remember walking back to the van, and I was like drenched and, mm. and blood and and I, I like couldn't believe I was alive. Like I, I was like, I'm alive. I'm alive. Like it took a wow. while wow. to actually let the reality, you know. Oh, so you really in. definitely are there in the part. <laughs> well, since I'll see this movie, I want to ask you then. Um, it's like when they throw you against the wall and stuff. How do they do that? It's pretty kind real. Of stuff? I mean, they don't. They don't like. They don't do it with the intention of hurting you. So you're not really. It's not the impact that it would have if somebody was really trying to really hurt you. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, you know what they're gonna do. Like there's blocking basically, so you know someone's gonna punch you on this side, and you know you watch, you feel when, when the hand is coming and it's mm. acting, and, and yeah. then you do hit the wall, and you do go down, and you do hit your head, but it's not as hard as you would. And they make sure you come back up. <laughs> like, uh, is she okay? Yeah, yeah no, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, your character is Cherokee. Cherokee Kism, which I think is one of the all-time coolest names yeah, I'll yeah. probably ever have. And you're actually character. part Indian yourself. Yeah, and part Chickasaw. Chickasaw. Yeah. Okay. So not Cherokee. No, not Cherokee. Now, you have another movie coming out this year as well. You have two movies coming out. Um. Yeah, I have, mo I have a movie called Three Priests. Uh -huh. That it's a it's an independent and uh, it's a small independent and it's it's in festivals now. Uh, so what do you play in that? Um, I play a, a kind of lost um, girl who's who comes back to her dad, her dad's house where she grew up and. Um, Seduces two brothers and seduces two brothers. Yeah, not not your brothers. No, no, no. Okay. Like two boys who okay. are brothers. I was gonna say some family there. Yeah. Okay. No, not my family. <laughs> 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 that was that would be a little bit much, I think. Um, and it's just like the sequence of events gets very very bad. What happens in the end? And who else is in that one? Uh, Wes Duty, Olivia Hussey, Michael Parks, who's actually in a lot of Quentin's movies. I think he's an incredible oh. actor. You were actually a model in New York when you um, were in school yeah. as well, before you got into the acting. I and was. I was. It's a, it's a wild world. 
And you also did a movie about called The Look about people who were coming to New York to become a model. So yeah, that was, that was right. Nice it was like kind of an, a perfect transition, I guess, to go from modeling to acting was to do a movie where you were playing a model, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was this this film about these kids who come to New York Center a modeling competition, and, and Carol Alt plays this sort of coke snorting, you know, <laughs> sleaze. She's trying to get all of our money, and mm. and and You're some good some fun parts here. You get to be with the Coke the crazies, the, yeah. 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 <laughs> it is really fun. Well, Hell Ride will be out this summer? Yes, August 8th. Thank you very much for being here Thank today, you so Julia. Much. The yep. movie is Hell Ride, and Ray Valentine is in Generation Kill, the HBO series. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.